not sure I remember how to do this. Let's try this. Or this. Or this. Maybe this. Bingo. Uh, depression is sneaky and it kind of snuck up on me again. I've been down the depression road lots of times, so I've uh, made some mistakes in the past and I've kind of learned that if I keep doing the same stuff I've been doing that's helping cause the depression, uh, you're gonna continue to have it. And sanity's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, so uh, changing the variables to try and get some different results. So I stopped doing everything? Absolutely everything. Part of it was because I was depressed and didn't feel like doing anything, because that's what depression does. And the other side of it was... I just needed, like I said, change some things. I've been through three different therapists, two of which uh, I seem to overwhelm them. This new one seems a little bit better and more sports psychology based, so we'll, I'll keep you posted on how that goes. Damn you, hair! I have a, a way better doctor than I did before, um, who kind of realizes that since I've been having depression for so long, it's probably chemical imbalances versus just the way I'm thinking about things. Because I'm already doing cognitive behavioral therapy and meditation, all the stuff I would be doing for people who are trying to get out of depression. She's trying to get my chemical levels back by upping my dopamine and serotonin, and then we're gonna go to straight natural supplementation stuff because that stuff sings to my brain better. So that's where we're at with that. I started meditating twice a day instead of once. I don't know if that's been helping, but it's making things kind of clear. And I've been doing things that I necessarily couldn't do when I was training because I was worried about, um, if I do this, I'm not gonna have enough rest, and if I do this, my body's not gonna be happy, and I can't snowboard because it might get hurt. I've been doing a lot of stuff like that, like reading books on quantum mechanics and quantum physics, uh, snowboarding, uh, learning about general relativity, and, you know, time and space and all that stuff, because I'm a big dork, and I think that stuff's really cool. Maybe that's the spiritual side of me because I'm not super religious, so maybe my religion is science? Maybe. Even with depression sucking the fun, enjoyment, and excitement out of life, Carrie convinced me to go to Arizona with her. Um, and it was my first trip to Arizona without track and field based. And I told her I'd only go if we can just have nothing planned and we just kind of shoot from the hip. And it scared the crap out of her. Is it exciting? Sure, shit on your head. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't plan anything. So we're just shooting by the seat of our pants and now we're sleeping in a car. <laughs> right? Yep. Right. And this is what happened in Arizona. The spark notes. I'll talk more about this in future vlogs. We made it to Arizona. I rode a dune buggy. Carrie rode a dune buggy and ended up in Vegas. Found out Mickey Mouse is an African American. Went on a sketchy awesome space needle ride one. And then we went on sketchy awesome space needle ride two. And then we went on sketchy awesome space needle ride three. Mike filmed his face for five minutes without knowing. I saw the Bellagio water fountain. Drove back to Phoenix. Decided to try to find Lake Havasu and Havasu Falls. Made it there at 10 p.m. We were in the middle of nowhere, no place to sleep, so we slept in the car. Kara was pissed. Sure, shit on your head. <laughs> Woke up and someone told us that we couldn't do it because it was a seven mile hike. Postponed Havasu Falls, Kara was still pissed, decided to travel Route 66 instead, so we went to a cave. Kara rode a jet ski, all my friends are dead, rode a dinosaur saddle, met Mater from Cars, went to Arizona, saw a bear, a wolf, a bison, and an otter. Arizona is now known as Lamazona. Went to Flagstaff, we ziplined, did a ropes course. That was the best part of the trip. I even did a snow angel in the snow. Uh, it's hard. Oh yeah. And we did some epic car singing. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 million years ago expansion started. Wait, artificial amateurs aren't at all amazing. Girl said you hallelujah. Do you ever feel like the plastic bag? My anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. If you change your mind like a girl, change your clothes. Oh, we built the wall, we built the pyramids, 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 we built the wall, we built the pyram
a mystery that all started with a big bang. Hey! Sister, just the trick, right? Like the fire that turned Cause baby, you're a fire. <laughs> so after all that and reading a lot of books and researching stuff, I kind of came to the realization again that, you know, suffering is caused by wanting things to be different than the way they are. As I was suffering. I think I'm kind of an odd person and see things differently than the majority of the human race, I feel like, a lot of times. But through these vlogs, I've attracted people who kind of think the same way I do, which has been kind of awesome. It's kind of like a love-hate relationship with my brain. Like, my brain's causing the depression, but it makes me think in this unique way. If it's the thing that can potentially kill me or that's trying to kill me all the time, it's also the thing that could potentially save me and have that opposite extreme effect on it, on the polar opposite. So what do you do? Do you love it or do you hate it? I don't know. Through this whole search, I've always, ever since I was a little kid, trying to find a philo my life's philosophy of everything. And it's been kind of hard because as you grow and change and evolve, your experiences change and make you think a different way. So your philosophy t necessarily changes. So can you create a philosophy that can change and adapt at the same time while you're rolling and going with the flow? As of right now, the Team Hoot philosophy is the closest thing I've ever had. And I actually... I love the Team Hoot philosophy. I think it's the coolest thing, one of the coolest things I've ever written. For the sheer fact, it's uh, it's a good guide for me. And as I was making it, I realized that through track and field, I haven't been really been living that way. And it was bumming me out, like hard, really hard. It's been bumming me out to the point of depression, obviously. So instead of going deep into layers and all this crazy stuff, I think about let's just stick with track and field for right now, because these are pole vault vlogs. The truth is, with this sport and pole vault, I always just wanted to see what I could do with it. Like, how high could I jump? What can I do? Can I change the way people think about the sport? Can I help people while I'm doing it? Like, what can I use the pole vault vehicle as while I'm in the vehicle? And it turned, it started to feel like after a while I became the vehicle instead of me just riding in it. It's, I don't know when that happened, but it did. The, the second part is that the Olympics as great as everyone makes it out to be and as cool as it is, it, it was never my goal. My goal has never been to make an Olympic team. You know, I think it would be cool, but my goal has always been to see how high I could jump. And if the Olympics came with it, great. And if it didn't, great. It's just what happens. It's just a meet. I would never had the idea that the Olympics was going to define me as a person or who I was. And I always thought it was funny that people thought that all the time. The hard part with this is that I, I get different messages <laughs> from people all the time. You go to these meetings with USATF and they're always telling you, The Olympics is a year away. We need to focus. We need to do this. We need to make money. We need to get to the Olympic meet so people, so the US can be dominant again. And, and the whole time I'm like, I don't really care. <laughs> or you get people who you meet on airplanes or you tell them you're training for the pole vault. Like, oh, you're training for the Olympics? To be honest, everybody's training for the Olympics. High school kids or even middle school kids, if they, they're training for the Olympics, you know, if they start and seventh grade and then they jump 18 six or something in seventh grade they're going to the olympics so all their training is going to the olympics if they make it so i don't think you're special if you're training for the olympics because everybody's training for the olympics so what makes you special in that aspect i don't know and i never got why the olympics was so special in the first place here here's a good example if i'm kind of losing you a little bit in 2000 ty harvey jumped 19 feet and he got fourth place and didn't make the olympic team in 2012, the last Olympic trials, uh, the third place finisher jumped 18-4 and made the Olympics. So are you saying that Ty Harvey is not an Olympian? Yes, he's not because he didn't make the Olympic team. Does that count against his career and caliber as an athlete? Most people would say yes because they saw that he didn't make an Olympic team. He's not an Olympian. But in my opinion, that's bullshit because he... <laughs> He jumped really high and he had a hell of a career and I don't care if he was an Olympian or not, he was a phenomenal athlete and there's a lot of stories like that and that drives me insane. He'll never be looked at as one of the top tier athletes in the United States in the pole vault because of that. I say, f I say fuck that, sorry for the language but that's just not right in my opinion. And So then anytime everyone ever asks me, are you training for the Olympics? Do you plan on going to the Olympics? No, I don't plan on going to the Olympics. It's you can't plan on going to the Olympics. You have to train every day for four, for ten years, pretty much, and then have you have to have two good days at the Olympic trials just to make the Olympics. So I'm not planning on it, but I'm going to plan on doing my best and jumping as high as I can. If it happens, great. And if it doesn't, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> so that question drives me insane, and I hear it all the time. 
And, and lastly, I keep thinking about this too. Like, what do you gain for being an Olympic athlete? I'm not really sure on that either. If it's intrinsic motivation and it makes you feel really good as a person. Um, and it was just a goal you had, then great. That's a super awesome reason to do it. But if it's to get like financial support or um, it's going to help you in careers down the road, that doesn't, that's not how it works. No one cares about that. They want to make sure you have skills to do the job you're trying to do. When your sporting career is over and you decide to finally you know, move on and do something else with your life, you get to start exactly where you started right as you would get out of college. And that's kind of scary too. But if you enjoy the ride, then do it. Everyone's training for the Olympics, and I don't really care if I make it. It was never, ever a goal of mine to do that. So, sorry for my rant. I'll stop now. So, Sean, what are you going to do now that uh, uh, you're kind of back? And are, are you training? You can't make a living doing this sport. And as I've climbed higher up the mountain, and it's not glamorous at all. It's actually really hard. And it almost gets even harder as you get higher because you get invited to these really cool meets. And the farther you go to meets, the more money you have to spend on them, usually plane tickets or something. So you usually lose money on every trip you make. My idea is is that track and field needs to get, a, get away from being track and field. Pole vault needs to get away from just pole vault and become some sort of entertainment. Just like people just go watch people BMX or Moto X or mountain bike or, or any of that crazy stuff. They'll watch people do flips on bikes. But nobody will just go watch pole vault meet because they're long and boring. There's some meets that are changing that. Like Brit's Pub did a really good job throwing some alcohol in there. Why don't we drink alcohol at track meets when you can do it at basketball games and baseball and football games. It doesn't make sense to me. Even though I don't drink at all and I don't necessarily condone it, but it, or I don't necessarily promote it, but I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. It's stupid. So I have a six month plan. The rest of the season I'm only going to do fun meets. Street meets and meets where I can hang out with you guys because you guys are what makes me happy and what makes the meet fun. Uh, when it started being about U.S. championship meets and the big giant meets, it stopped being fun because there wasn't a lot of people in the stands. There was more people um, at the Winston-Salem street meet than there was at the indoor U.S. championships. Which is stupid. And I don't necessarily want to go to the U.S. championships. You know, I mean, it's cool to say if you win a medal or something, I won second there last year indoors. But I had way more fun at Winston-Salem with, uh, you know, Coach Rick and his family and the KMR crew. So, new vlog, new intro new team. I'm only jumping for Team Hoot the rest of my career. Unless, you know, someone's gonna give me a ton of money and I believe in what they're doing or something and I can make a career out of it. Team Hoot, Twin Cities Track Club, and Flight Deck, because those guys sing to my soul. That's what we're doing the rest of summer. And, um, if it's still fun after six months, I'll keep going. And if it's not, then I'm gonna move and start base jumping with some friends who showed me how to get into it. And I've been wanting to do that for years, but I haven't been doing it, or even skydiving, for the fear that I'd sprain an ankle or hurt myself and not be able to pole vault. But um, my views on it have changed, and I don't really care anymore, <laughs> because uh, pole vault was keeping me from doing a whole lot of fun things. And that's not going to happen anymore. I'm going to do fun things, because life's too short to do anything but fun things. Oh, last thing. Carrie got a baby duck. His name's Henry. I think he's pretty cute. <laughs> Look at his feet. Look at his feet. Look at his feet go. <laughs> I have Team Hoot training plans. If you guys would like to purchase those, I'll be more than happy to start writing those. I know I end up getting a lot of emails around this time because high school track starts. Plan, go to team-hoot.com and purchase some weight or um, training plans. And I also have not a lot of mediums left. But I have a few smalls and a bunch of larges. So if you want a Team Hoot shirt and you believe in the philosophy or what I'm saying, uh, great. If a lot of stuff I said in this vlog really pissed you off, I'm sorry, but I've been nothing but honest throughout these vlogs, so that's all I'm going to continue to do. Um, I love you guys. I hope I said something that made sense, and I'll try to make a vlog next week. See ya.